fun. All right, guys, so now we're just going to go on a simple tip. Uh, if any of you guys have watched the last Tremors movie on Netflix there, um, you can actually see this this little tip in action there. Um, as Burt Gummer would say, any good survivalist knows this trick. So you've got shoelaces. These guys, they're not the greatest. They break. I mean, I these ones are decent still because I've been very good with my shoelaces. But I took this one out of the boot to show you guys this trick. Now, this is just your regular run-of-the-mill shoelace. I've seen them break, you catch them on things, or a sharp rock, they snap, they cut. You know, this is good for some stuff. I mean, if you're in a survival situation, if you had two trees that were close to each other, you might be able to take both your shoelaces, tie them together with your tarp or your emergency blanket, or you can even, you know, tie them tight enough and lean uh, tree limbs up against them to make a makeshift shelter to get out of the weather for the night. But, if you can go to your local department store and get yourself some 550 paracord. Now, I picked purple just so that it would be easy enough for you guys to see against this brown boot. But, para, you know, paracord is essential. Um, you get the right stuff inside here. There's actually different. There's a set of strands in there that you can take out. Um, I can't pull it apart now because I sealed both ends. Yeah, but... Those little strands in there are just no, are just other little ropes. You take them out and you can actually make yourself tie them between trees or tie them together in order to make your stuff. Or you can make a fishing line out of it. Um, you've seen on past videos, I don't have one today, but usually I have one of those big fishing hooks right here on my hat. That's what those are for. They're not just for fashion, but they can double up as, you know, survival necessity if need be. Um, you can do the old, I can't remember if it's Inuit or Indian fish hook there where they actually take a small piece of wood and they shave it down into basically a tiny, tiny little spike and then they drill a small hole in the middle of it and they put it on here and then they put the bait on that and when they, you actually, you can't really hook the fish with it but you you want the fish to actually swallow that, that uh, lure or hook style and then you'll be able to pull your fish back out. You could eat with the cord in here, you could easily pull a salmon out of a river with it without a problem. I mean, a survival situation, if you pull the salmon out, you're eating for days, man. Especially if you smoke it, days. But, you know, you put it, uh, if you watch that last Tremors movie on Netflix, this is going to actually be, you know, um, like they sh showed you on there, a friction saw. All you have to do is take it, like they were, uh, I think they were bound with zip ties or duct tape. And all they had to do was take it and uh, wrap it around. They did their feet first, they wrapped it around. And then they put the one piece in their mouth and put the other one over here. And they just pulled back and forth and it acted as a friction saw in order to saw through the zip ties that were bound, binding them. Um, could you cut a tree down with it? No, obviously not. You're going to tear your cord apart and stuff like that but um you could also take it and make a you know a, a quick tourniquet if you had to easily um you could turn if you know what you were doing you know you could tie this up in several different ways and actually make a nice little sling out of it you know you take it wrap it around your thumb real quick so that your thumb will actually hold your arm up and then you could wrap it around and tie it to itself so you could hold your own arm up and Stuff like that, but I mean, obviously you know how to lace a boot up. And of course this guy just doesn't want to go through the eyelets on here. But, you know, you lace your boot up with it. And lo and behold, now you not only have super strong shoelaces that aren't really ever going to break on you. But, if you needed to in a survival situation, you could take it. Pull it off, and now, like I said, you got a friction cord, you've got fishing line, a lot of the, tons of different uses for it. And this segment will actually bring me into my next one. All right, guys, so I just showed you how the paracord can use, be used for shoelaces, which will help you out. And it's easy that way you have some on you at all times. 
Um, like I said, multiple different uses on it. But here's the cool thing, guys. If you check out uh, OCM on Facebook, we actually sell the survival paracord bracelets. Uh, we sell all of our lanyards, our keychains. Toss one here. Our cool keychains, um, our lanyards, our gun slings, our paracord bracelets, carriers. and our, our game carriers for all your small game. They're all made out of 550 paracord. Now, what's cool about it is, is that, well, say you're out walking in the woods, you snap that, you know, shoelace. Well, you can sit there and either tie to try it, tie, yeah, try to tie it back together wherever it ended up snapping, and you're never gonna have enough again to actually lace it up all the way or whatever. But these guys, we own, we sell them for like five dollars on our Facebook store, guys. They're they're great little accessories. They come with the clip on them. Easy enough, guys. All you can do is take it, take the clip off, take our little OCM tag off in it. Which, you know, this could be used in another fashion, but that's another video for you guys. Well, we could use it in this one. You could actually take this and throw it in your Tinder box. And it'd be a nice little fire starter as well. Okay, so you take that. Now, if you're any good hunter like me, I usually have my knife on me, but you don't have to. Because if it was too hard to get off your hands, just take your knife, pop those two little deals there. And just simply give it a twist. And start unraveling it. There we go. And you guys are going to end up with enough paracord. We make them nice and tight so you guys get, I think it's around 8 to 10 feet in each one. Now see, I have no fingernails, guys, so this is why I keep my knife on me for situations like this. My fingernails are always nice and t short. I've, ever, I've kept them that way ever since I had kids. You get playing and stuff. I'd hate to scratch one of my kids on accident for no reason. So then, just set that there in case I need it again, which I probably will. And I'm hoping you're gonna fast forward this part. All right, guys. So I got that all down, take it apart, pull the clips off, there's one clip, and get this final clip all started off, undo that nice little easy tension knot. Get this up. Now, you guys have, well, I'm six foot, so I'm just, that means my arm span's about six foot. And just under eight foot of paracord right there that was on your wrist less than two minutes ago. And that can replace your shoelaces. That could be something to tie your food up with in a tree if you didn't have anything else. Um, it could be a belt easily. I don't know anybody who's got an eight foot round waist. If they do, wow. Um, <laughs> that's saying something right there. Um, and especially if you paired this, you know, with any of our game carriers, those who got even more paracord, our slings, shoot, that's got to be close to 50 foot of paracord. Um, if you had them already, your shoelaces already done with paracord, you know, that's a, that's a good good amount of paracord you could have on you that weighs almost nothing. I think, you know, between the shoelaces, a gun sling, a game carrier, a bracelet, and a lanyard, you might be looking at maybe a pound. And that's well worth it to me because say you're out there and you've got a tent and you're doing all that good backcountry camping and hunting well, say a good gust of wind comes up and rips that rain flap of yours and snaps that line that's on the rain flap. Well, now you've got a piece of cord that you can use to repair that rain, you know, broken rain flap strap. Or, like I said, that's that's eight foot of cord. 
If you can find two trees that are six foot apart, you can wrap that around the trees, tie it nice and tight, drape your makeshift, uh, you know, however you want to make your shelter, with either leaning stuff up against it or anything like that. Or, you know, you get soaked and you got to, you know, you brought three pairs of clothes with you for your week long hunting trip out in the back country. Well, right there is a clothesline. Simply take it, take it apart, put it between a couple of trees or whatever you got handy. If you've got a couple of, you know, you're in between a couple of, in a ravine between some rock ledges, you know, tie it to some rocks and you got a clothesline. Or like I said, you can tie your game right up into your, in your game bag right up with this, toss it over a tree limb and hike your game, your game right up in the tree or you know, I'm pretty sure depending on the size of the animal, you could, you know, obviously small game, no problem. You, depending on the size of a, a big game, like a white tail, maybe a small fallow deer, or even maybe a small feral pig, you could probably take this, tie it up to them, and haul them up in the tree so you could clean it out and have food. Um, I think these things are rated for, well, I think it's 550 paracord, so I think it's rated for 550 pounds. So, I mean, then you could, you know, easily hit, you could easily haul a white tail up into a tree, especially after gutted, um, depending on the size of a bear, um, what, what kind of bear you're hunting, you could probably even haul that up into the tree with it. Definitely pig, or, and I've done this before, you're out fishing and you've got a stringer. You can take this, feed it through the gill, bring it back around on the fish, and just put a small, quick, effective square knot into it. Little, you know, boom. Now you've got a stringer and that fish is on here, still fresh in the water, swimming around. The next time you start at this end. And all you gotta do is take it, like I said, come down, fish it through the gill of the fish, Loop it back through, do another quick, quick cinch knot, and bam, now you've got another fish on the stringer, and you can keep going like that all day long. Or you guys, you know, some of you, you could make a trout line out of this easily if you're stuck out in survival. Take it, take it apart. Now this woven fabric over top is still pretty strong. You can take this loop. Put it over a friggin' stick that you stuck down in the ground. And then just take it and take all this nice stuff out of the inside of here. And you could tie it to it on the outside. And that's where you hang your hooks off in it. Bunch of different little lines with all your hooks hung off in it. You know, that goes out into the stream. Floats around, catches whatever. You might, you know, who knows. You could catch a lot of good fish that way if you did it right. So that's my quick tips for, you know, quick bushcrafting ideas, backpacking and stuff like that. Um, you got the, the windproof matches. You've got the quick rocket stove that you could already have set or you can make with makeshift stuff. I'm sure, you know, if you're in, if you've got ingenuity and you find a tin can out in the woods, you pop a hole in that guy and you find a soda can or, even if you just took it and you just had some rocks and you, you popped a good little amount of hole in your tin can and you just took four rocks and put one on the bottom and one on each side and on the top, you can put your tinder right in that little box you just made out of those rocks and set it up and that would work just as well. Um, I mean, if you found a hollowed out log that could, you know, a rotten log tree limb that would fit inside of it, that would work as well. Uh, the only, the whole thing of that Coke can for that is just to have something to sit it in and that actually forces the heat and the flame to go up, go in and straight up because it wants to escape that air, that tube because heat rises, flame rises. Um, would I suggest just going ahead and putting something inside of that tin can and using it like that? No, because there's no draft. That's another thing for that, you know, it. The tin can or the soda can allows you to have a spot where the draft will come in to actually keep the air going through the fire because in order to make fire, you need fuel, oxygen, and combustion. 
I do believe there's the three properties of fuel, oh, fire. It's been a while since I looked at that triangle. But I'm sure any of your local fire departments would be glad to tell you. Had to see if I had many work stuff coming in. Yeah, I still have a job, guys. <laughs> but that's the beginning of the bushcraft for the start of the uh, filming season for 2020. 2021. That is the start of the filming season for 2021. Just three quick, simple bushcraft ideas for you. Uh, survivalist skills, just so that you have them. Um, there'll be more. I got to do some more research and pull some more stuff out of the old memory bank up here. Um, we will find more time. We'll get you guys more. Uh, leave your comments and your suggestions down below. Or if you have a prop, if you've ever had a problem while you were out doing something, and you just couldn't think of a simple, easy way to get through it, let me know. I'll come up with the, with an idea for you and. I'll figure out a way that it works so that way it's not only easy for you, it's easy for everybody, and that you'll be able to have that knowledge the next time you go out and that same predicament happens. Um, I appreciate you guys watching our shows. I appreciate you guys following the channel and following us on Facebook. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and thanks for watching, guys. Uh, it's been Outdoors with the Common Man. I've been Coyote. We do real videos for real people. We'll catch you next time. Don't forget to stop by Worthington's for all your firearms and ammunition needs. When you stop by, mention Outdoors with the Common Man and receive a 5% discount off in your order. Thank you.